I'm Lydell Banks, the chair of the Young Professionals Division. I first of all want to thank you for joining uh, this morning's call, which will be for the Young Professionals, the first of many to come. So we certainly appreciate your attendance on today's call. I will uh, start off with just going over a few points about the Young Professionals Division, well, which was formed somewhere around 2013 from a group of former Rising Stars. We're currently uh, well over 230 members, and we're represented by 135 member companies. And our division is broken down into four committees, which is leadership development, marketing, communication, and membership. Uh, our mission here is to establish a diverse group of young safety professionals who represent communities, businesses, governments, and learning institutions alike to reduce risks and as well as engage our employees, measure progress, and continuously improve the safety profession through collaboration, innovation, and a shared commitment to saving lives. Uh, this is a very passionate and dedicated group. Uh, we're very thankful for our members, and we're on the verge now, as you can tell by this call, of reaching out to other divisions to form those bonds and those relationships and ultimately the collaboration. And this conference call, which we are sharing with the other divisions, is a, is a matter of fact to that. So the first of many, as I said, to come and the first of many events for the YP to share with the other divisions. So we thank you for your time this morning. I'm just going to read a few quick points on the Campbell Institute, and then I will turn it over to Catherine Smith. The Campbell Institute of the National Safety Council is the Environmental Health and Safety Center of Excellence, uh, believing that EHS is at the core of business success and fundamental to operational performance. The Institute helps organizations with varying sizes from different industries to achieve and sustain excellence. The Campbell Institute membership offers organizations the opportunity to engage with EHS thought leaders, offers recognition for organizational success, and there are several opportunities for all organizations to learn from the best. Through research, the Institute shares knowledge and practical methods. The Institute also investigates future environmental health and safety problems and solutions to help organizations achieve greater performance and by thus saving more lives. The Campbell Institute is the transformative force in environmental health and safety. And without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Catherine Smith, who is the Programs Manager for the Campbell Institute. We certainly thank you for your time this morning, Catherine, and the floor is yours. Muted. All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for that introduction. Um, I also wanted to thank the Divisions team as well as the Young Professionals Division for giving me the opportunity to talk with all of you about the Campbell Institute. Um, as Lydell said, my name is Katherine Smith. I'm the Program Manager for the Campbell Institute at the National Safety Council. Uh, I have been with the Council for almost five years and have worked all of those years with the Institute, uh, starting out as a project assistant and then kind of working my way up. Uh, I'm very excited to get to talk to you today about uh, my organization, and um, I, of course, will start the story uh, in the only appropriate place, which is at the beginning. So the National Safety Council was founded in 1913 via a congressional charter and is committed to eliminating preventable deaths in our lifetime. Uh, we know this is a very lofty goal and we look to our over 50,000 members and 50 individual volunteers to help accomplish this one person at a time because we realize that safety and EHS is really all about those people. Uh, the Council's priorities and initiatives, uh, they cut across everyday, all areas of everyday life, uh, at work, in homes and communities, and on the road, as you can see here. Uh, the Campbell Institute is just one of those initiatives at the Council, uh, and it promotes, um, uh, it, it lives in the workplace portion of the priorities. And it really means that the work that the Institute does um, is mostly f focused on workplace and what actions employers can take. So this very smiley gentleman here is uh, Robert W. Campbell. Uh, he was the first president of the National Safety Council and is considered to be a true visionary of his time. Uh, he, looked at, 
he looked at safety as a necessity and realized its importance both in the business and everyday life. And if you take a minute here to, to read the quote, um, it really embodies what Robert W. Campbell was about in his day. But this, this notion of that, that safety is the right way to do things and safety is the core at the core of business uh, is pretty common to us today, but I'm gonna try to put it into perspective um, based on the time in which he actually said this quote. So this photo here is, um, you might recognize it, it's pretty popular. Uh, it was taken on the 69th floor of the Rockefeller Plaza building in New York City um, during the last months of construction. Uh, there is some debate about whether this photo is real or if it's staged to create, you know, some some interest and excitement about the building. But nevertheless, it was taken on September 20th of 1932, so almost 20 years after Mr. Campbell had had realized the importance of sta safety. But although uh, it was not commonly practiced, as you can see, I don't think anyone would use this as a marketing ploy today. Um, so. We're gonna fast forward about 70 years now, keep it short and simple. Um, and uh, as, a, as a natural, um, I'm sorry, the, there's actually supposed to be another picture on that slide, um, but it's the, it's the logo of the, of the Robert W. Campbell Award. So it was a natural decision to choose Robert W. Campbell as the namesake for this award. Uh, and this award recognizes organizations for their integration of environment, health, and safety into their business operations. Uh, the award was founded in 2004, and it celebrates organizations each year uh, for their accomplishments. After several years, a group of the Campbell Award winners and other EHS leaders from the council um, one in, had an idea to form an area, form a place where organizations could learn from high performing organizations like Campbell Winners. Um, this idea through a lot of, a lot of hard work uh, came to fruition and the Campbell Institute was launched in 2012. Um, the Campbell Institute, as Lydell had, had mentioned, um, we, we were created with a mission to help organizations of all sizes and from all sectors uh, and industries achieve and sustain uh, excellence. Over the last almost five years, uh, the Institute has been dedicated to protecting people and preserving the planet through our many initiatives, which is really what I'm going to spend my time today talking to you about. Um, all of the Institute projects are kind of categorized into three different areas. Uh, participation uh, really focuses on our membership and our awards. Uh, putting on events, uh, we, hope to, we hope to share information, um, both our own information, but also um, other leading edge practices from the field. And the last kind of category is research. Um, and that typically focuses on cross industry problems and makes advances towards finding solutions to those problems um, using our membership um, as a knowledge source um, to kind of create those best practices. So starting off with participation, um, as I mentioned, um, the, it's really focused on our members and our partners as well and the awards. Um, so currently we have 33 member organizations um, and seven partners, and you can see the seven partners are kind of down to the, to the right there in the little, little bit darker honeycombs. Um, the partnership is, is reserved for other nonprofit organizations, um, government organizations, as well as educational bodies like universities. Uh, but the membership is for your more traditional for-profit businesses and corporations. Um, our membership spans 10 different industries and represents um, a knowledge base that, as I mentioned with the research, the Institute really depends on it. Um, it is this knowledge that helps us um, complete our mission and really helps us save lives. So for that reason, um, we do spend a large portion of our time in the Institute making sure to create value for each of our members. Uh, each year we ask the entire membership how the Institute can specifically help their, their organization um, the, based on this feedback, we create a, a value proposition, and as you can see here, we cover these five different areas. Uh, each set of our listed um, have, a, have a more detailed uh, task list um, that are, um, then these, this task list is completed annually, and really we try to ensure that our memberships in the Institute um, 
um, is, is helping organizations make a difference, um, both within their own organization and outside of it. Um, that's about all I'm actually going to say about our membership. Um, I don't want to focus on that because I know that a lot of you are not institute members and I want to make sure that um, I spend most of the time talking about things that we offer that you uh, all can participate in. Um, so the first one of these is um, the award, uh, one of the awards. Um, uh, as I said, another aspect of our participation is, is awards um, and, and the Institute has two of them. Um, the first one is the Innovation Challenge here. Uh, this award does not actually focus on safety. Um, it is pretty unique in that, that, in that instance. Um, but it celebrates successful environmental and health innovations. Uh, this, this, like I said, this challenge is open to all organizations. Um, and if you believe that your organization um, has helped the triple bottom line, we encourage you to take a look at that and share your story with us. Um, the other... There we go. Uh, the other award, um, as I had mentioned before, is the Campbell, uh, it's the Campbell Award, the Robert W. Campbell Award. Um, applications for the 2017 cycle are due May 1st, um, but the award offers much more than just the recognition of winning. Um, like the Campbell Institute, and as I mentioned, the award kind of started the Campbell Institute, um, the, the award promotes um, uh, trying to help others improve um, based on based on their best practices that are within these these applications. Um, so for that reason, all of the past winning applications are available for download on our website. Um, there, each application is about a 30-page narrative that really tells the story of each of the winners um, and tells the story of their EHS journey. And um, all of them include specific information that can help improve EHS management systems if applied to your own. Um, but oftentimes, um, some of these practices come up um, in some of our events that we, um, that we do put on each year as we look to them, much like our, our members, for some of their, their input and knowledge. Um, the next upcoming event that the Institute is, is uh, putting on is the is at Campbell Institute Symposium. Um, it is taking place in New Orleans on February 21st and 22nd. Uh, this is an annual event um, that every year grows, but we're currently about at 150 individuals um, that attend, um, and they attend to discuss emerging topics, uh, and share new solutions to old problems as well. Uh, this year, some of the topics include global contractor management, uh, emergency preparedness in a changing climate, uh, leveraging emergency technologies like drones and virtual reality trainings, and uh, several other ones that are available um, on our website. Um, as, I, as it says here, registration is still open, so if you're interested in going to this, um, going to this event, uh, please register. Um, I know that myself as well as the whole team will be there, and we're, we're definitely looking forward to um, seeing some new faces. Uh, the next kind of group of, of events that the Institute puts on is actually in conjunction with the NSC Congress and Expo. Uh, we put on a series of events that um, is that we kind of term in the past the Executive Edge Track, um, and this track includes um, three different events. The first one being the Executive Forum. Uh, the forum really focuses on broad topics from more of a theoretical perspective, whereas as the workshops focus on more practical aspects of this theoretical discussion that happened at the forum. Uh, last year, our topic was the art and neuroscience of safety, so actually taking a look at how um, practices within the art, um, within the art field and um, actual neuroscience um, have, how they can interact with each other um, and actually create um, better situations for hazard identification. Uh, but this year, um, we are, this next year in 2017, we're, uh, we will be looking at SIS prevention. Um, and then both of our workshops will look at SIF prevention, but from two different lenses, the first one being a more tactical and metrics-based um, view, where the, the second one being uh, focused on the human element. And the last um, kind of group of events that we put on is actually our webinars. Um, 
although these are not, of course, in-person event, um, the, ho the, the Institute hosts webinar series throughout the year. Uh, two of the series, the, the first two here, are actually a, a reproduction of the content from Congress and the symposium, um, and the ones that have received the highest feedback. Um, this is a great way for us to increase the reach of, the no of, of this knowledge that happened at, the, as happened at this event, excuse me, um, but for those people who weren't able to actually come and attend. Um, a few months ago, we just started the 2016 Best of the Symposium webinar series. Um, I'm sorry, we just finished it, but we're actually starting the Best of Congress, um, a webinar series, and that will kick off in May. Um, and that will actually kick off, as I mentioned, with the uh, executive forum that, that uh, focused on the art and neuroscience of safety. Um, and then we'll also be doing a webinar about one of our workshops that will focus on the visual literacy portion of it, that's the kind of art portion, um, that is actually led by the Toledo Museum of Art, which is one of our uh, partners. Uh, the third webinar series, though, um, is dedicated to our research. And uh, we'll, it, they all feature our, our wonderful research associate, Joy, um, presenting on the new white papers that were published um, that fiscal year. Uh, the next one is uh, March 1st, and it will be on uh, workplace well-being. And um, I will actually give, be giving you a preview of that here in a couple minutes. Um, and I know I've been spending a lot of time kind of talking about um, the webinar series, um, but the great thing about the webinars is they're completely free. So it doesn't matter if you are an NSC member even or an institute member, um, they are free to everyone. Um, and an even better thing is all of our past webinars are actually on our website and can be watched, can be streamed through our website, again, for free. You don't even have to sign in. Um, and the, the web link is right there, and you can just scroll down and see all the webinars from the past, and they range from topics anywhere from, um, from leading indicators, sustainability, um, you know, looking at risk management and things like that. So there's quite a few different topics there if you're interested. But the remainder of our time today, I do want to spend talking about our research, because as I have kind of mentioned before, um, our research is really at the basis of, of, of what we do. It's, it's the heart of what the Institute does. And it's really a result of, the organiz as, of several organizations coming together with a singular purpose. Um, and we are really the Institute is simply kind of the messenger um, to help other organizations um, like yours and others to save lives. Uh, so, so the three different topics that I'm going to focus on today is uh, leading indicators, uh, workplace well-being, and then um, some research that we did with the Campbell Award. Uh, so starting off with um, leading indicators. Um, leading ind indicators have actually been um, a, a long-lived topic uh, for the Campbell Institute, and, and our, our work on leading indicators is continuing. Um, it, this, this work over the last five years or so um, has resulted in three different research papers. Um, and it's, as I said, it's continuing um, actually with a work group uh, that we have put together uh, to talk specifically about the topic. And I'll get to kind of what they're doing here in a minute. But the series of papers um, have used best practices, like I said, from our members um, to help organizations uh, align, or I'm sorry, define, align, refine, and design. We love alliteration. Um, <laughs> um, but these are, these are really a group of papers that, that um, we're trying to help organizations um, kind of uh, start a leading indicator program within their organization, because there's a lot of organizations that want to do this but don't really know how. So the first phase, the define phase, um, it not only defined defined what a lead indicator is, and it defined it as something that is proactive, preventative, and predictive. Um, but it did, it did it, I'm sorry, it identifies leading indicators um, as being actual, meaningful, and useful, uh, among other characteristics um, that have kind of been defined as far as what is a good leading indicator. Uh, moving on to then the align phase, um, the research identifies both enablers and barriers. Uh, for instance, enablers of, of a program may be um, ha having the uh, enabler being having executive buy-in within the organization and having a well-communicated and broadly understood 
uh, predictive value. So making sure that your employees understand why you are collecting the metrics and why it is important. Uh, a few barriers that have been uh, that have been identified include the ability to develop uh, consistently actionable metrics. And similarly, um, a lack of reliable and consistent relationships between metrics. So what we're really saying here is make sure that, uh, that the, what you are collecting and what you are measuring, um, it actually makes sense. It, it actually is making a difference. Um, you know, there, there is some sort of relationship between your variables. Uh, the third phase, the refine phase, is, is where <clears throat> we've used best practice, practices from our members to identify commonly used metrics um, and then have categorized these metrics into three different groups, being behavior-based metrics, operations-based metrics, and system-based metrics. And in the, um, second phase, the second research paper, um, it actually identifies what these metrics are um, and gives you a specific list of some of the commonalities between um, our members. <clears throat> and um, the, the last and current phase is um, the design phase. So in this, this step, the Institute has helped lay out a roadmap for organizations um, to build their leading indicator program and um, give some suggestions um, that includes starting um, with choosing, tracking, and, and, and out analyzing your data, uh, making relationships where they make sense, as I, had, as I had mentioned, and moving on to gaining support and defining roles and responsibilities for those that are involved in the process, whether that is your, your, um, you know, your line worker that is responsible for counting X, Y, or Z, or if it's someone in HR that is responsible for tracking training, things like that, and as I have mentioned, make sure, making sure that all those people within that process um, understand the importance of what they're doing. Um, but lastly, and, and perhaps um, most arguably the most important, uh, and most importantly, um, the Leaning Indicator Program should, should be integrated into your safety management system. And, um, to make sure that you keep it balanced with, balance the leading indicators with also your lagging metrics. Um, and be, you wanna do this because you need to um, make sure that you can measure success. So at the end of the day, is it actually, um, is it actually decreasing your injuries and illnesses or you know, your days away from work? So you wanna make sure that there actually is an impact. So as I mentioned before, um, our work on leading indicators is ongoing and still, and still currently happening. Um, we have a work group developed um, who will be benchmarking these common, uh, common indicators that I, as I had um, mentioned, and we're looking for um, validity across industry. So not just in manufacturing, but also in, you know, it could be the, the combination between manufacturing and, um, you know, some sort of transportation and looking at if these indicators, if measured identically, um, could be common across industries. So that's, that's a really great work that we're doing um, currently. And um, as, I, as I mentioned, if, if you're interested in becoming involved in anything with leading indicators, um, uh, I can put you in contact with uh, our researcher who is uh, leading that project. So moving on then, um, as with all of our research papers, um, um, this, this workplace well-being um, initiative um, is really a cross-sectional look at our members again, um, but it's looking at their health and well-being programs. Um, well-being in general is a topic that is quickly gaining momentum in the field, which is why the Institute wanted to, to take a look at it with our members. Um, and it, it, it's really focusing, um, this paper really focuses on the integration of safety and health, and we're not just talking about occupational health, but well-being. Um, and um, this paper looks at um, how, how organizations create programs that prevent injury and illnesses while, while still enhancing overall worker well-being. So not only making sure they're not hurt, but actually going above and beyond and making sure that they are a healthier person. Um, you can see here that the paper um, identifies five uh, key takeaways that touch on the development, implementation, and maintenance of workplace well-being initiatives. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of these specifically, uh, but I did want to touch on a few foundational concepts um, that were kind of overarching within, within all of these uh, takeaways. Um, so firstly, 
the workplace must have a strong foundation of safety efforts and in order for a well-being program to really take hold and achieve um, positive results. It, it really is saying that safety comes first and if you don't, if you don't do safety well, you're probably not going to do well-being very well. Um, secondly, um, there needs to be frequent engagement uh, of employees that promotes team building and, and improves morale while helping employees get healthier. So not just communicating with them, not just continuing to give them information, but make sure you're actually engaging them and you're receiving feedback and they're participating. And so you actually have to engage employees. And as you, I'm sure most of you are thinking, um, this is not much different than your safety program. Um, it's, there's very similar concepts when, when creating a, a good safety program within or safety culture within your organization. Um, and lastly, um, simple changes can make a big difference. Um, for, for example, um, encouraging your employees to get up and walk around to take stretch breaks and, you know, to take the stairs instead of the elevator um, is a great way to, to kind of build that foundation of, of a broader culture of health and, and taking that time to explain that it's not, you know, um, from a safety perspective, it's not only ergonomically correct to do this, but it also, um, is, is a, a healthier way to live your life. Um, so then moving on to um, the, the third research paper that I'm going, that I'm, that I'm going to kind of um, explain to you guys today um, is actually one um, that was rejuvenated uh, in 2016. Um, so I've talked about the Campbell Award a couple times now. Um, and by virtue of this process, um, you know, it really identifies high performing organizations. Um, so in an attempt to make their practices more widely known and a lot easier than having to sort through, you know, their 30-page uh, applications, um, we created a research paper um, in 2012 um, that actually looks at the, uh, it, it looks at and identifies the similarities between all award winners. Um, but using this, this same concept, um, we actually rewrote the paper in, in 2016 and um, we have included the information from the most recent winners as well. So there's um, totaling uh, 14 different organizations that have won the Campbell Award that we have looked at to kind of find these commonalities. So the findings from the, the research identify, uh, identified all the similarities and generally they fell into five different areas. Uh, leadership, integration, data management, alignment, and corporate citizenship. And, and um, naturally, um, all five of these um, are, are not new to many EHS professionals. Um, they are actually just portions of our application, which makes sense of why there were chunks of similarities there. Um, but we wanted to take a step further uh, and not just to define what these areas were, but as, actually um, include specific programmatic examples from our winning organizations. So these examples are further, you know, these five sections are further broken down into subcategories. For, so, for example, the leadership section um, incorporates examples of CEO commitment, uh, leadership training, performance plans, and employee empowerment examples. So, um, and like I said, all five of these are, are broken down in a very similar manner. And not only does it kind of introduce the topic and what the similarities are, but it gives those specific examples from those organizations. So it's a hope for, for us that this, this kind of compilation of information can provide organizations with practical information, something that you, know, you can take away and actually do something with. Um, and we wanted to look at a, a more, you know, a variety of different areas, um, always trying, like I said, to enable those organizations to achieve that, that EHS excellence. And we want to make sure that, that the Campbell Award is able to do that for organizations, even those that don't decide to apply, um, but simply those who are, who are interested in getting better. So that was kind of the last overview of the research, but as I, as I mentioned before, the, the research is really at the heart of, of what we do. Um, and I hope that you got something out of the three uh, research projects that I kind of detailed out here. Uh, but we do do a lot with a whole, with much, many more topics, um, including sustainability, contractor management, uh, risk perception, and also leadership. Um, and as I had mentioned, all of our research papers, um, including the ones I spoke about and these on, ones on these other topics, um, are again available online, free for everyone. Uh, you can download the PDF. Um, 
and do do what do what you would like with it. Um, so, like I said, there's no signing in or anything like that. Um, it's just for free. Um, so, if you have any uh, specific questions about our research, like I said, I can put you in contact with our research associate, and she would definitely um, I'll be willing to talk to you about how or if you would like any more information. Um, but that actually brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, so if you have any questions um, about the Institute in general or something uh, more specific about the research, I will attempt to answer them. Um, but if not, I might just uh, forward your question onto, onto Joy. Um, here's my contact information, both my, um, my email address as well as my phone number. Um, and please feel free to reach out. Any questions for Catherine that we want to take now? Can you hear me, Catherine? I can, yep. Okay, make sure I wasn't still muted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyone now who wants to uh, ask a question, or as Catherine said, if you want to follow with her individually? which is fine. Uh, of interest for me, Catherine, I'm in New Orleans, and I did not know Tulane University was a uh, member. So that was very interesting for me to see someone close to home, a part of the uh, Campbell Institute. Yeah, our, our, we are um, we're very proud of our membership. Like I said, it, it, it um, is very, um, very broad. Um, like, like I said, we, ha we go um, – we span over about 10 industries, and we have representation from really uh, from around the world. So uh, we're always looking to diversify our membership as well. So if yeah, that's excellent. That's excellent. Well, Catherine, I want to sincerely thank you for taking this time to uh, thoroughly discuss the Campbell Institute with us as well as the programs and uh, all the uh, the events and things you have going on, uh, which is a great institute and uh, a lot of great information. And Christy, am, if, am I mistaken, but will this recording go to the YP's uh, link on the NSC website as well as the other divisions? I was actually going to have it posted on um the division's homepage is fine. Great, great. Okay, that's excellent. Again, Catherine, thank you for your time, and I want to thank all of the uh, members from YP and any other divisions who joined for joining us today. As I said earlier, uh, this is the first for a couple for YP. One, the first of many webinars where we plan to do um, professional development in one quarter and then another quarter of purely uh, division updates and division news for those persons who find it difficult to travel to events such as Congress or mid-year. And it's also the first uh, part of our collaboration plan with working with the other divisions. Uh, and just to be clear, you know, the purpose of the YP is to bridge that gap with young professionals entering into the safety field. And also it's to facilitate that membership within their specific industry divisions, and this is one of the first uh, few things to for us to work together on, and I'm particularly excited about that. I'm excited about working with the other divisions. I'm excited about this webinar today, and again, one more time, Catherine, I thank you for taking time out of your schedule to present this to us. It was greatly appreciated. Christy, uh, personal thanks to you for all of the behind-the-scenes work uh, that you not only do all the time, but particularly with this web webinar. I greatly appreciate that. And unless there are any other questions, I will dismiss the call. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, Lydell, for all the work you do for the Unprofessionals Division and for all the other divisions in general. I mean, you've been a great help in trying to bring these divisions together and having them collaborate. So that is much appreciated. No worries and, oh, at all. Thank you, Christy. And I'll also add my own thanks to Catherine for kicking off this um, webinar process, which will be a quarterly webinar 
an all division quarterly webinar going forward. So stay tuned for more information about webinars in the you know subsequent quarters. Great. Great. Well thank you all. Please go out and have a safe day the rest of this day. Thank you for your time and thank you for your dedication to the National Safety Council. Uh, we all greatly appreciate it. You all have a great day and be safe. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.